I'll be going over how to get started in VDMX by customizing your own interface to trigger visuals. And when you start a new project, it's pretty bare bones as you can see. And that's because VDMX is modular and built for customizing. So I'll get you started with a three layer setup that I prefer. And really this is just one example of how to do things. The first thing I'll talk about is the workspace inspector. And this is essentially your toolbox, where all the tools to display and manipulate video are located. And you can access these tools by the various tabs here. The next thing I'll discuss is the UI inspector. And what this does is provides all the information for every customizable interface element, from pull down menus to buttons and whatever media you have loaded. This also allows you to activate parts of VDMX using shortcuts, keys on your keyboard, buttons and knobs on MIDI controllers, and even OSC apps. So the other window you start off with is the media bin, and this is where you store your visuals and video clips. It's also the interface used to display your videos. So if you go to window and browse import media, you can go ahead and load up your visuals this way and I'll just load up the freebies from our website to start off with. And if you click on a visual, you'll notice it loads right away, so I like to change that to manual, and I'll go over that in a bit. Next, I'll talk about the canvas and main output, and this is the sum of all manipulated video layers where your entire video mix is combined and displayed. And if you click on layers and canvas main output here in the workspace inspector, I'll change the main output settings to display 1080p since my source visuals are all 1920 by 1080 and the main output window fills out to reflect that. So if you go to window and full screen options, you have the option of going full screen. And this is what you'll want to do if you have a projector or a secondary display hooked up. And for sizing mode, I usually keep it on fit so that whatever clip I load fills out the aspect ratio of the main output. Now I'll talk about layers, and if you go to the Workspace Inspector, click on the Layers tab, this is how you create new layers. And layers contain all of the controls and windows to manipulate video, and there is a stacking order. So the topmost layers will always affect the layers beneath them. You can think of it in terms of Photoshop or After Effects if you use those programs. By default, Layer 1 is already created, so I'll remove these two. And I like to rename my layers, so I'll call this one Top Layer. Now I'll customize the interface for the top layer. And if you click Plugins in the Workspace Inspector and Plus, you can add a preview window for that layer. And I'll rename this preview window to Top Layer Preview. I'll reposition the Top Layer Preview window to the top left here and resize the window and you'll want to activate it by clicking on this pull down and hitting top layer. So let me adjust this window a little bit. And if you go back to the workspace inspector and click on layers, we'll talk about the different interface elements here. And the first being the layer source. This displays all the clip information and provides control over playback. So you have a transport control here, you can adjust the rate and the speed. This is where you'd also reverse the clip or slow it down. There's also this loop tab here and you can change it to a ping pong style. Cut to black or keep it a, a traditional loop. Next is the layer effects window and this is where all our effects are contained. And keep in mind that the effects applied here are specific to this layer. To add an effect, you'd click on this pull down menu here and choose your effect. And you can use the sliders to adjust the amount of that effect. And the last window here is the layer composition window. And this is where all the settings to display the layer to the main output are. These are essentially your transform properties. So you can adjust the X and Y positions 
and the width and height of your currently loaded visual. Now I'll customize the layer interface and if you click on these two squares you can release the windows and reposition them wherever you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag the effects right below my preview window and if you resize and reposition your windows next to an adjacent window you'll notice that everything snaps in place. So I like to combine the layer composition and layer source windows in one since I don't really use them too much. So I'll go ahead and put those below the effects window. Just snap everything in place here and reposition. Next I'll go and create layer two. So click on the layers tab in the workspace inspector, hit plus and I'll rename this one to mid layer. Let's create a preview window by going into plugins, clicking on plus preview, and I'll rename this one to mid layer preview. Let's activate this as our mid layer preview by clicking on mid layer in the pull down. For consistency, I'll just match this up with the other preview window and snap it into place to match it and drag that over to create the next column. Release the layer effects window here and I'll reposition this under the mid layer preview window. Next I'll grab the mid layer composition window and reposition this as well. And release the layer source and drag the tab to combine it with the mid layer composition window. So let's make our final layer. Click on Layers tab, plus, and I'll rename this layer to Background Layer since it's the bottom layer. Create a preview window by going to Plugins. Rename that to Background Layer Preview. Let's set this layer preview to be our background layer. And I'll match that up with the other windows. Snap these into place here and move it over to the next column. Let's set up the background layer interface. So let's break out these windows here. Just reposition and snap these into place. So this is the layer effects. Now we have the source. And the background layer composition window, which I'll just grab the tab and combine it with the layer source. The last thing we'll do is create media bins for each layer. So if you go into the workspace inspector and click plugins, first let's rename this media bin to top layer media bin. Click on plus media bin. And this one is our mid layer. So let's call this mid layer media bin. Okay, let me just reposition this snap it into place here and create the final layer media bin and this is the background layer media bin so this completes the layer interface and let me drag it right below the layer composition here and just reposition it so it fits properly so there's one option I'd like to change and that's to not view the file names for my video clips. So if you go to plugins and click on the media bin for the top layer and options, you can choose icons only. And I'll do that for each one here, mid layer and background layer media bin. We want the media bins to trigger clips on the respective layers. So if you click on this pull down and choose the layer, now it should be associated with that layer. So I'll change the trigger type to manual since it allows more control. By default, if you just click on a clip, it'll automatically load in. But at least this way, if you set it to manual, you can avoid accidentally triggering clips immediately by clicking on the icons. So now if you click on an icon of one of your visuals, you can click this square here to trigger them into the main output. 
I'll briefly go over the layer preview settings. And if you notice in the preview windows, the playback is kind of choppy. So if you click on this tab on the top left, you can change the frame rate. And if you set it to 30, you'll notice it plays in real time. But it does take up system resources, so you might just want to keep it at 10. The button at the top right of the preview window is your blending mode. There's a lot to choose from, so you might just want to play around with it, see what works best with your visuals. This is multiply on the mid layer. It's a bit dark. So let me change that. Let's try overlay. Still a bit dark. So what you can do is adjust the layer opacity by clicking and dragging the sliders to the right of the preview window. And you can blend it a lot better that way. The last thing I'll show you is how to apply effects on a layer. And you'll want to turn off replace so that you can stack effects in each layer. So let's try a halftone effect. And that applies a halftone texture right on top of your visual. Um, let's change the colors here by using false color. And this is somewhat of a tint effect. If you want to apply effects on your main output, you have to go back to the workspace inspector and click on layers. Then click on canvas and main output and the canvas and main output effects show up and you can break that window off, place it anywhere. So any of the effects that are applied on the main output are applied to the entire mix. So let's go with the mirror effect and distortion. So now the layers combined are mirrored as you can see here. I'll go to full screen so you can see it better. Hopefully this helped you get more familiar with VDMX, and now it's up to you to unlock its potential. Visit our website at docoptic.com. All the visuals you've seen today are available for download on our website, along with additional training and tutorials. Thanks for watching.